Okay, so what are you saying people and welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. So today guys, like always, another weekly analysis for you. On the screen are the pairs that will be analyzed today, but make sure you stay to the end of the video as I do have a bonus pair in store. But yeah guys, we'll go for my trade for the week first and then progress into the analysis shortly after. So if there is a particular pair you do want to see my analysis to, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. But I had a short and pound USD this week, which did end up in a loss. I was shorting at the retest of some structure, which is basically the analysis coming into the week. What we were discussing on my last weekly analysis, we had this prior support here, the low of the range, this range over here. We had a nice breakout, I was looking for the retest of that, retesting this low here as well. Nice healthy breakout, looking for a retest, got my entry signal, stop loss a bit above the high, give me some room. Price did take me out just about by a few pips. Did see some downside, however, after the Fed interest rate and NFP, we did see price kind of shoot to the upside. Now things are a little bit awkward on pound USD, but we will discuss that when we get to that pair later into the video. But first, I want to go through DXY quickly because that, of course, is very important. DXY, I'm still bullish bias despite the move we've had this week. It was a nice bullish move. We didn't really see the continuation of that. Price just um, rejected that high. Broke to the downside pretty aggressively, taking out these lows here. But the key thing for me is this low back here. This is what's keeping me bullish on pound, uh, not pound USD, sorry. This is what keeps me bullish on the DXY on dollar. If price was to come down this week and take out that low, I'll hold my hands up, reevaluate things, and probably shift my buyers to bearish at that point. Because a break of this low would do exactly that. But for now, we're still intact. Yes, we're taking out some structure here, but it could just be a deeper pullback for price to then continue higher, which is what I'm expecting at the moment until, like I said, we take out that low. So I'm still bullish on DXY. If I do expand to the daily chart, I'm still looking at following this bullish structure here high low high anticipating new high low for the next high and again a push to 107 is still my overall bias for that pair start taking out this low like i said i'll start folding my arms but at the moment we're still coming back to retest some highs here which i did say last week as well we may come back to retest the highs here so we'll see what we can do next week but it still remains bullish uh, at least for my outlook so taking that information into euro usd i'll be expecting the inverse of course euro usd doing that same thing we can see swing there lower low lower high lower low again looking for a lower high to push down even the 4h structure still bearish as well still printing in these lower lows and lower highs so as long as we maintain that again don't break through this high here i'm still expecting a sell-off to the downside however you know we're traders not analysts here so we need to think from a trader's perspective, where potentially could we sell from to get some nice profits, but at the same time, where would the market potentially take us back up and maybe stop us out of break even or stop us out for a loss? So from a seller's point of view, I do like this area here. Price support, price broke through, come back for the retest. We have come back into it already, but it would be nice if we can have a double top at that area. But at the same time, I would be very careful coming back into these areas down here because if the market does want to continue bullish this is probably where we're going to do it from if price has found some new bullish structure now and this wants to continue bullish and dollar is going to be uh, very weak then we're going to see something like this from your usd next week so if that's the case we need to protect ourselves against that so if we do get to some uh, into some nice sales from this area this would be a smart place to go break even or take some partials or even just close the trade in general if you do want to look for a big swing, that's a smart place to close the trade. I'm still looking to target these lows, but I definitely will be looking to trail my stops as soon as we get to this area. Potentially even take partials as well, because this is a place where, again, if you're bullish, not a bad place for longs. And if my bias is going to be um, invalidated at some point, this is where I do expect it to be to be done um, from. So round 1.07293 is a smart place for a target. Also 1.06 on the dot basically is also a smart place for a target, but you're just opening up for that potential risk that price can go against you. So I would point that area out, but the analysis and the bias is still very much the same from last week. Still expecting downside. We have come to a deeper level. So let's see what we can do here in terms of entries next week. So you can come back for another retest then get the sell. And uh, yeah, we'll be targeting to the lows next week for your USD. 
Okay, so over to dollar yen. So dollar yen price action is still quite hectic. I'm not a big fan of the yen pairs uh, at the moment. I'm not looking to trade them next week, but dollar yen has some interesting price action, I must admit. We have come all the way back down to the 152 area, which was very, very um, significant resistance for dollar yen until we had the big breakout. Now this is the first time we've come back to retest it. So dollar yen, there's nothing really changed for me apart from you know this big exaggerated wick there that the trend is still very much to the upside still very consistent with the higher highs and higher lows so my bias for dollar yen still remains bullish and i still do expect more upside however because of the way price is moving it's not very smooth not very clean very volatile it is not looking very attractive to trade it's looking like a crypto uh, at this point in time so i'm not a big fan of dollar yen here or any of the yen pairs for that matter but from a technical standpoint structure still is structure and we still do have very critical support at 152 which i do expect upside from i'll be a bit careful with dollar yen not trying to overstay my welcome although the overall buys for the market still up we are seeing some heavy selling pressure coming to the market and we could see something like this happen next week and another big sell-off so i would say that would be a smart target yes we could go back to the high this could be the next high low we could swing it back to the highs but i would be a little bit careful and start managing the trade at the very least coming back into 154 500 so dollar yen all in all still bullish market structure still uh, giving us high highs and high lows we've come back to very very significant support and i do expect to see some type of bullish reaction but i would be very very weary around 154 500 for some sellers stepping back into the market but that is the analysis going forward into next week. Okay, so over to dollar CAD. So dollar CAD still bullish bias, like I said, with dollar still looking for opportunities that favor dollar strength. Dollar CAD is still in somewhat of an uptrend here. Yes, we're in a larger consolidation. Price action is not particularly great there, but if we do focus on the last few months of price action, we've been in a slow kind of gritty uptrend here it's still very consistent with our higher highs and higher lows we pull back into some nice structure recently as well still obeying that as support as well so as long as we maintain that structure and don't start breaking through especially taking out this low here i do expect more upside for dollar cad next week and push back to the high and potentially the high over there at 1.385 ish 383 we'll call it uh, for dollar cad so yeah i'm still expecting more upside for for dollar cad we did have a really heavy sell-off into that level but equally strong rejection even even stronger actually rejection from that same area so it does look like we are holding quite well and it would be nice to enter there after that rejection on nfp but if we could see one more push down double bottom at that level that would be a nice pace for some entries of course looking for another reaction there not just jumping straight in and then yeah, targets back to 1.378 make a lot of sense. Or if you're feeling a little bit more optimistic, 1.383 makes sense as well. But maybe taking some you know, partials at the high or training a stop loss there would make sense too. But for dollar CAD, we're still maintaining this bullish structure. And we have came back into a solid level of support, which is still rejecting quite firmly. So if we can come back there again, that'll be a smart place for some entries. Stop loss underneath the zone and looking for some longs. And that is the plan next week for dollar cat. Okay, so over to Euro Pound. So Euro Pound, we're back at 0.858, which was the level I was talking about last week. I said if we can come back and get retest of this area, this would be a smart place for some entries and take advantage of some downside for Euro Pound, which hasn't happened yet. So I'm still looking for the same move this week as well. We had a really exaggerated move a couple of weeks ago, which com uh, completely capitulated. The market had no sign of continuation whatsoever and we came down really really hard so now i'm looking at a correction of that move and then a continuation at least back to this support level we can see multiple rejections of this support so i would uh, be a bit too optimistic i'm saying price is going to break straight through it because you know every time price has come back recently it has held very very well so that makes for a very nice target if you can get some entries there stop loss above the zone you know, looking at one to two, one to three, maybe even more depending on the entry, not a bad trade at all. There is some room to the downside back to the lows here should we break through. So maybe you can hold some positions to see if that does happen. But why I am looking at for Euro Pound is somewhat of a head and shoulder pattern. This being the left shoulder, that being the head and the right shoulder there. So 
basically we're anticipating the right shoulder forming at this area and a push back down to the neckline and potentially a break of it. But for now, this is the move I'll be favoring for Euro Pound. Again, conditions aren't great, not my favorite pair in the world, but not a bad opportunity and certainly a massive level, which I do expect to hold. So looking for some downside next week for Euro Pound. Okay, so over to Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar has been interesting, but we did see that up move we were talking about last week, which was the fact that we came into this consolidation. I've been very bearish on Aussie dollar. I've been very bullish on uh, on USD. So I've been expecting downside for Aussie dollar. However, this one never really sat up nicely in terms of the price action on this chart because we had consolidation, we had a big breakout. Essentially what I was looking for was the retest of the consolidation for some more downside. We didn't get that price broke back inside the consolidation last week. So I said, because of this now, I can't really be bearish anymore uh, on Aussie dollar until we break back outside the range. If anything, I'm looking for a bounce of the low of the range now, the fact that we broke back inside and then some upside, which is exactly what we did get there uh, this week for Aussie dollar. And now we're trading at the high of the range. So if this is just a big fake out and potentially price is gonna use this to its advantage to now push up, you know, grab liquidity below the lows there. Now we could probably see some upside. Then we need to see a confident break of the high of the range, this resistance level here at 0.663. And then yeah, break and retest, pullbacks after that make a lot of sense. Essentially what I was looking at here, we'll be looking at in the opposite direction. Or of course we could respect the range and come back down. If you're looking to trade, you know, just sell high, buy low. This is not bad conditions for it. As long as we stay within the range, you know, you probably can get some really nice trades there. But for me, looking for a bit more of a trend, a bit more direction, I want to see price really commit to a particular direction. If it's going to be to the upside, let's see a confident break of the high. And then I'll be looking for my pullbacks, retest to ride that high. And um, that is what I'll be looking at for Aussie dollar. Really nice move there from the low of the range back to the high. We might see some downside to start the week off. But if we do break through, then I'm looking at some breaking retest opportunities on that high. In terms of targets, I'll just be training a stop so I wouldn't have a particular target in mind. Best case scenario, we do have the highs up there, but I'll probably take it one step at a time. If I go in the full H time frame, there are some highs here that price keeps throwing wicks around. Not a bad place for a target there as well. So it'll be up to you how you want to manage that trade, but I would be favoring more upside above 0.663 next week. Okay, so over to Entity CAD. Had a bearish bias coming into the week. I was looking for price to hold this level here. Had some nice previous bearish structure and I was looking for price to essentially hold that and continue, but we failed. However, my bearish bias still stands. I'm looking for some downside from this high, but at the same time, I am being a bit skeptical that we are coming back to this low and I wanna be careful coming back into this area because if I was a buyer, you know, this would be a place where I would be looking to buy the market. So this would be a very smart place to take profits, partial profits, trading stop loss, at least just manage the trade because the chance of us getting back to the low have decreased and the chance of price going bullish from here has definitely increased. So I would be a bit careful there because that is where the trade could then fail. But scaling to the higher time frames, daily chart in particular, I'm still forming these lower lows and lower highs. So I'm still looking for that lower high essentially for move back down to the lows. So that's where the bearish bias comes from. Still looking for impulse correction impulse. However, showing some respect to some support, which could then take us higher. Because of course, you know, nothing's 100%. Price could of course fly, but we have to be managing our risk, managing the trade wisely. And this would be a nice target for next week, but potentially if all goes well, we could be looking at holding some positions to that low there. But this is the plan next week, friends of the CAD, looking for a retest of 0 0.82500 for some sales back into 0 0.817 for next week. Okay, so over to Pound Entity. So Pound Entity, we're coming back into the low of the range, which is where I said buyers could be looking good next week. Coming back into this support level here, roughly around 2.08500. And of course, we've got the high of the range around this area here, 2.117. So I said last week, if I quickly scoot to the daily chart, I'm still looking for that next higher low connecting these lows here. So one over there, second over there, potentially third. If we can hold this trend line, hold that support, I think this is a great place to buy and potentially target the higher of the range. 
at the same time if you do break through these areas of confluence then this is a great place to sell from on a retest looking for some downside so for me this is a very pivotal area because if we are if i go to the weekly chart if we are having that inverse head and shoulder and a breaking me test of the neckline which would be this resistance here support there then we shouldn't really be breaking underneath this area if we are breaking underneath then this is probably just a big fake out of this same resistance and we could see a lot more downside so this is very significant support which i'll be expecting price to hold if it is going to continue high if it doesn't then I would not be holding that bullish bias anymore and looking for sales on the retest. So very, very pivotal area here at 2.06. Uh, right now, place a nice wick into that level, but need to see a bit more momentum come back into the market before taking any trades. And of course, looking to target the high there. Again, risk to wall looks really good. And if we can hold that, that's what I'll be looking for. If you start breaking through, like I said, we'll be swapping that bias to bearish and looking for some downside but for now we're still holding that structure so for now i'm still bullish looking for some upside next week okay so over to cad yen so like i said not really interested with the yen pairs this week the market is a little bit too volatile for me the way they're moving the wicks are very exaggerated big spikes i'm still bullish because that's the direction of the market structure was still very consistent with the higher highs and high lows as you can see on the daily chart weekly chart monthly chart same thing all the major time frames are pointing up therefore you know, as a swing trade my bias is still going to be bullish and we are approaching some really nice healthy you know, levels of structure prior highs prior resistance now turn support for the first time similar to dollar yen coming back into some key levels there and some other yen pairs too but because of the way price is moving it's not really smooth very volatile i'm not really feeling too comfortable trading the way the market is moving uh, so i'll be staying away from the yen pairs letting them settle find their feet a little bit and then i'll be more interested with them but my analysis is pretty much the same as dollar yen we've got key support there which i would watch out for yes we're coming to nice levels of support in the higher time frames 111 uh 800 looks good but i would not want to hold this trade for too long don't know when we're going to see another intervention happen big spike down look at these wicks you know looking to buy the market you're always going into that possibility that you could get caught out on one of these big sharp moves back down another reason which why um i'm a bit skeptical getting involved with the yen pairs for now but if you're looking to trade it technicals look good it's just the market is just a little bit volatile for me so i'll be focusing on the dollar pairs and some other pairs um make sure you do stay tuned in my telegram group because i will post my watch this going into next week but for now cad gen still favors some upside and looking at target around 113 140 for next week okay so over to pound usd so i am still bearish on pound usd i'm still looking for downside because I like the wick we've left here on the daily and the weekly chart. It does look like price is overall still showing respect to this area as support, turn resistance, daily chart likewise as well, we're struggling to get above. However, on the full H chart, we actually are trading back above because we've seen a successful candle closure above and now price is coming back to retest it. So for me to be looking to short pound USD, I need to see price breaking back underneath this level here, which is essentially what I was talking about with Aussie dollar last week. If we can break back inside, well not inside, sorry, break back outside the range and then look for a retest there to short, that would be a nice place to do then position myself um, short and then take advantage of a swing back to the lows here because I still do expect dollar strength. I could be wrong. If that's the case, then I expect prices to hold this as support and continue higher because we are still back in that range. High the range over there, low the range there. If we are going to use this as support, then I would expect a move back to the highs, which are not really interested at the moment in time. I'm still looking for this to be held as resistance. I'm looking at this being the next high in the market and now expecting a move back to the lows, but I need price to get back underneath for me to be taking some entries. So pound USD still short bias, looking for a move back to lows at 1.23. Let's see if we can get a strong move down, break some structure, use that as resistance again. And I'll be looking at a move back to the lows at 1.23 for next week. Okay, so over to pound CAD. So pound CAD's price action is a little bit similar to Euro pound, which we covered earlier in the video. Big impulse to the downside, big impulse back up again. Just the opposite of what Euro pound did. It was a big move up, big move down. 
typically when we see these v-shaped patterns or inverse v-shaped patterns for euro pound sake they typically mean reversals and with this v-shaped pattern here i wouldn't be surprised if we were to do something like this and see a big move to the upside and in that case i'll be expecting price to make its way back to the highs there roughly around 1.735 if i do zoom out the daily chart for me is still overly bullish we're still printing higher lows it might not be the cleanest chart in the world but you can see we are still printing these high lows we might have taken out some minor lows there as well so yeah it definitely isn't the cleanest uh, chart in the world but you can still see the overall kind of inclination of the market is slowly pushing to the upside so for me the trend is still bullish and the fact that we had this very strong impulse back up again this v-shaped pattern i think there is a good chance we do see some more upside for pound cad so what i want to be seeing is price breaking through this resistance and then looking for some longs on the top of that because that will give us some really high probability trades because at that point we've kind of invalidated this bearish structure here because we had high over there high over there price could still form another high and, and come back down if you do go and break through that it kind of invalidates that structure i'll be expecting more of this in the near future so pound cad i would have a bullish bias here but it does have some work to do in terms of breaking through this level first at 1.722 and then we can be looking at longs back to the high there and potentially further as well if the trend on the high time frame does continue but for now we're still struggling at this level here so i do expect a bit of bit of choppiness maybe one more push down before we do get the breakout but when we do if we do then we can be looking at some retest to take it long and you know simple targets back to the high nothing too complicated so pound cad bullish bias let's see if we can break through that level at 1.723722 and look for some retests back to the high next week Okay, so over to pound yen. So pound yen, again, still bullish bias. Another yen pair, again, not really eager to be trading these markets next week with the volatility we're seeing in the markets not really attracting me whatsoever. In terms of the market structure, we're still bullish. You can see the higher lows, the market's still printing, higher time frame still bullish as well. So, you know, I am looking for a bounce sooner or later coming into, what is this, 191. Uh, 250 we'll call it i do think there is a good chance we'll see a bounce but i'm worried i'm well, not worried but expecting to see some type of move like this happen shortly after as well so again similar to pound gen i wouldn't try and stretch this trade back to highs although i bet the risk to wall looks looks good looks attractive i think probability wise i would be careful coming back into areas as such 193 500 we could you know there's a good chance we could see another sell-off from that area as well so the same analysis as CAD yen, same analysis as dollar yen from earlier in the video. Looking for some upside, structure still very bullish, We're approaching some key levels of structure where we could be seeing higher lows form and continuations of this higher time frame trend. But at the same time, you've got to be managing the trade accordingly. According to the current conditions of the market, this is not regular uh, conditions, not smooth conditions. We're seeing a lot of volatile moves, so you need to take that into consideration. And I think targets there are realistic, healthy as well. Potentially could go further, can leave small positions to run. It's up to you how you want to manage your trade, but this makes for a good target to have next week. So analysis is still very bullish in pound yen and looking for push into 194 next week. Okay, so over to gold. So gold, I am starting to look for some longs. I'm liking what I'm seeing with the price action on the lower time frames. Again, I'm still very bullish on gold. Big push to the upside, big impulse, slight pause, another big impulse. Looking at a slightly deeper pause, bigger pause. And now I'm looking for price to attain those highs again and potentially higher as well. So I'm expecting more upside for gold. And we have taken out these lows here. We've tried to take out the lows here again with this wick. So we're showing some signs of exhaustion. I do think price is just slowly gearing up for that higher low to form. Maybe we do have one more push down first, but what I'm I will be looking for is a break of structure, a break of resistance, showing to me that, okay, the buyers are really stepping back into the market, push through, look for a pullback, and then I'm expecting a push back into the high there at 2,400. So that remains the plan for gold. If we can get a push that breaks through not only this high, but this high as well, you know, that just increases the probability that price is going to push back to the high there. But if we can get a strong break of that, that'll be fantastic. Looking for the next higher low, because this kind of bearish um, 
uh, correction has kind of um, met its match. It's been it's been invalidated, and now price is now finding um, structure higher up and creating higher highs and higher lows. So if you can hold resistance or even hold areas further down, that's why I'll be looking for long opportunities and expecting price to push back into 2400, which of course is that high time frame swing high. So yeah, gold for me, I'm still very bullish and I do think it will be sooner rather than later that we do form that higher low and start pushing back to high. Silver is also at an interesting price as well. So I do like what I'm seeing for both of them, but gold does look good too. Let's see if we can get a break of that structure, retest the high. Let me just clear this up so you guys can see a little bit better. Uh, retest of the high at around 23.28. And let's see if we can get some buys back to the high next week. Okay, so over to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, we had a big move down this week, breaking through 60K, 61K, followed by a big recovery as well. And it has left behind a big wick there on the weekly chart, which is very, very interesting now. As I've said, I'm still very bullish on Bitcoin. I do think we've had a really big impulse and we're just seeing a breather of that impulse, whether we come back down to 52K, 48K before we do see a continuation or we're seeing it now potentially. I still do think we'll head back to highs and probably see higher prices soon enough for Bitcoin purely from a technical standpoint. So I do think there is more upside to be had. If this is the higher low for Bitcoin, then I wanna see price breaking through some highs first. So let's see if we can maintain this momentum break through this high here, because this is what sent us down in the first place. If that does happen, then yes, pullbacks after that will look good. And then some continuations will look very good after that and targeting the high around 73, 74K. So yeah, for Bitcoin, I have still got these areas mapped out here, 52K and also 48K where we could potentially pull back into. Um, yeah, still some smart places for some longs, but if this is the high low, potentially Bitcoin you know, has taken out some some uh, liquidity underneath those lows and now it's ready to push up. If that's the case, let's take out this high and then we can look for some pullbacks in the low time frames and ride it back to the high. If we've still got some room to the downside, keep an eye on 52, 48K. I think those are smart places looking for some um, good entries to hold for, for the longer run as well. So. Bitcoin's still bullish, still looking for pushback to 74K. Let's see if we can take out that high and then look for some pullbacks shortly after. But all in all, we're just looking at smart places to buy, smart places to, to anticipate the, the, the ending of these pullbacks and continuations back to the swing high. So still looking at upside next week for Bitcoin. Okay, so over to Euro NZD. So Euro NZD, I am looking for some downside. I do think we have had some really nice structure here. High over there, let's move this out of the way. High over there, second high over there. And I do think price is now put in its third high in respect to those highs. So if that's the case, there's a good chance we're gonna come back to these lows here around 1.74343. So yeah, I'm expecting more downside here. You can see the weekly chart here, a lot of rejection, big wick to the upside this week and price came straight back down, giving us somewhat of a shooting star pattern there. So we do have some strong support here. And if that does break, I think the floodgates will open. And I think there's a very, very, very good chance we'll end up at these lows. Similar to my analysis on Euro Aussie from last week as well. If we can break through that low, I do think we can ride this to the downside. We do have a pretty big range there. Yeah, 400 or pips. So you know, it's looking very, very nice. Risk reward could be looking good if you get yourself a decent entry there. But uh, yeah, I'm looking at kind of a triple top here, triple double top, double top there, triple top. Same thing, just essentially price has found resistance, struggle to break through in a few time, a few attempts. And now price is now breaking through that level or I'm at least anticipating price to break through that level. And if we do that, that is when I'll start looking for some shorts. At the moment, we can still respect the support and go higher, which I won't be interested in. But if we do break through, the shorts are opened up and then I'll be looking for some sales on the retest of this low here or the retest of this low here, just depending how big the breakout is and how big the pullback is afterwards as well. But in terms of the direction, it's definitely to the downside. What I'll be favoring, just need to see a confirmation of the break of the low and then we're in business or at least then we can start looking for some trades, whether we get a pullback to retest it, you know, that's a different question. But this is what I'll be looking for for Euro NZD. It's a pair that is definitely going to be on the watch list next week. 
and uh, let's see if we can get the break for some shorts. Looking for a retest of 1.784 or 1.79156, depending on how big the pullback is. And looking for shorts all the way back down to 1.745 for next week. And guys, that does bring us to the end of the analysis. If you have enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments down below if you found it useful. Uh, let me know any pairs you're looking at trading next week. I'm interested to find out. Drop a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like I said, check out my Telegram channel. I will post my watch list going to next week there. So make sure you check it out. Link in the description to that. But besides from that, guys, have a fantastic weekend rested ready again for the next week hopes you all ready and roaring to go on the streams besides from that guys thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one